Well, I want you to consider that there is a small self over there where you are and over here where I am that pretty much runs our life. The small self has absolutely no interest in you loving you. There is so much density around this me and you and I aren't even present to how dense it is. Okay, so here, here is me. Me looks pretty hollow, but me isn't. Me's got a lot going on over here. And everything that's going on over here makes me more dense. And the more dense I am, the more real I am for me. You get it? And if I'm real, I have to be protected. But living day to day, our daily thoughts and actions prove that we believe this is who we are. Feelings. Not feelings. Not feelings. Feeling. There's a difference. If I say feelings, you think emotions. But I say feeling, then you have a question. Is that emotions? Could be. What is feeling? The only thing we now want to do is get in touch with our ability to feel and our resistance to it. You with me? When we're willing to give up controlling how people are, how life is, and what's happening. To be able to certainly just be in the moment of now and just feel whatever's there not to hold on to it, you understand, but to allow it to move through. If the small self is gonna protect me from feeling, we're gonna use pain just for a moment because everybody could agree, we don't wanna feel pain. Is there anybody in the room who says they wanna feel pain? No, nobody really wants to feel pain. However, by virtue of the small self saying, I don't wanna feel pain, it then tries to control what you feel and what you don't. And that's not possible. The moment you try to gauge what I can feel and what I can't, then you are blocking feelings. And by the way, it is the resisting, the blocking, the pushing away that creates all the density here. Are you with me? Because we, as human beings, are on this planet, I assert, okay, don't write it down, you don't have to sell it, but we're here for one thing, and that's to experience life. And that's it. And experience equals feeling. What we're gonna say here is that all energy gravitates through our heart space. And anytime you resist anything, be it pain, upset, frustration, or the exact opposite, anything you cling to, try to hold on to joy, happiness, and love and appreciation. They both have the same end result in that it stops the flow of life energy. Fear is what shuts down the heart. And when we shut down the heart, the energy can't move through. It collects. The heart has as many or more neurons than the brain. It sends more information to the brain than the brain sends to it. So it's very intelligent. The only thing it doesn't have is language. We have been in a culture that has forced us to be brain conscious and we push the heart aside. So the game here is to be powerful, very powerful in both domains, not shutting down anything.
First of all, love is not an emotion. Love evokes emotion and we collapse them and we think love is emotion. I'm going to distinguish for you what we're going to call counterfeit love. And we, we've been trained well in counterfeit love because it's everywhere. And one of the things I learned a really long time ago from a great coach, what she said was, when you get trained in counterfeit, you don't know the real deal when you see it. And mostly what we know about love, not to make any individual or group wrong whatsoever, but mostly you and I trade in counterfeit. The thing is, this counterfeit love leaves us wanting all the time, and this wanting becomes a way of being. It's not action, it's being. So I live my life being wanted. Now don't misunderstand, I'm not saying you shouldn't have things. I'm not saying you shouldn't want things. However, what I want to break up is the being, the wanting. You find, you follow? See, if I'm being whole and complete, if I'm being this thing we call the higher self, then wanting becomes an action like a game. It becomes something to fulfill my time with. It becomes something to play the game of life around, to have what? Experience. Because we're here to experience life. And experience means but we don't feel. What do we do instead of feel? What do we do? Do you know what we do instead of feel? Watch TV. We think. We think. Yeah. We think. And what do we think about? Wanting. We think about what I want. We're not present to what's happening. And listen, you guys, you could collapse what I'm saying. You could collapse when I say not present to what's happening. You might think, well, you just need to be present. And I've said be present a few times too. But the truth is, that ain't it. That ain't it. That's an old paradigm. Trying to be present is an old paradigm. The new paradigm is being. If I am an empty vessel, I'm being. And now I'm available for all of it. I'm feeling what it is. See, we try to be present to feel how. To feel good. I want to feel better. I better get present. I'm going to meditate now so I can feel better. It's the small self chasing, wanting, instead of, wow, I'm feeling what I'm feeling. And I feel it and I allow myself to experience whatever it is. And the very highest level is I experience it with no judgment. Now that is a complete life shift. When I say let go, some of you, what you're hearing is don't feel that. I'm not saying that. Feel it, but let it go. It's not, see, it's not let it go like it's a good thing to let it go. Like Paul, it's a good thing to forgive. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, if you're not letting go, what are you doing? You're holding on, for sure, you're holding it in the body. So in this moment, just take a feel and feel in your body any contraction that happens to be there right now, any, and let it go. We hold feelings, we hold emotions in the body. There are contractions. If I don't forgive, then I'm holding the grievance in the body you're feeling it and letting it move through the only reason you're hanging on to it is because small self has you believing that if you hang on to the side of the pool you're safe i'm saying no if you swim you're safe 
And the tippity top is I let go for no reason. That's the tippity top. I let go because that is who I am. And if I'm here to experience life, and experience is feeling, then I must learn to feel. Feeling is not holding on. That's a misconception. Like, oh, that feels so good, I'm gonna hold on to it forever. No, that turns into contraction. If I say honor life unfolding, what is it to honor? What does honor mean? Well, be aware. Be like you can acknowledge. To hold in high regard. We, collectively, do not honor life unfolding. We don't. We do not hold in high regard moment by moment by moment by moment. We hold in high regard chunks. And that's why we can't impact very much. Consider life not even moment by moment by moment by moment, but consider life millisecond by millisecond by millisecond by millisecond. There are explosions happening over there where you are. I mean, millions, more than millions, of explosions happening at the atomic level that is over there where you are. And every explosion that happens, is an explosion of consciousness and energy. Every single one. And all those explosions collectively have this consciousness that we call you. What would it be like if you were forgiven for everything? What if you, in this very moment, were forgiven completely? And ordinary forgiveness implies a little bit, if you will, of superiority about it. Yes. Because I have control over, do I forgive or not? Does it make it wrong? Is ordinary forgiveness important? Yeah. It really is. In human relations, it's very important because ordinary forgiveness gives me the possibility of reconnecting with you at a level that maybe I could, we could communicate, this is complete, it's out of our space. Just like quantum love, there is quantum forgiveness. And by the way, quantum forgiveness is the language of love. How is quantum forgiveness distinct from ordinary forgiveness. Quantum forgiveness is you, now listen, you are forgiven. You are forgiven. It's ever present, it's already there, and it's a matter of I step into it or I don't. Then I have to be willing to step into a forgiveness that already exists. It is mine for the taking. And if I do it in the spirit of what we're about in this hardship, if I do it in the spirit of that, I'm not doing it so I can keep doing whatever it was I was doing. It's not about me getting over on the system. It's about the ability to be myself, my true self, my quantum self. And who is that? If you think back, way, way, way back, think all the way back, there was a you that was already there. You were very little and there was a you there and that you is here right now. It's the same you. This essence of who you are was always there. It didn't age. I mean, it is. it even has the same personality, if you will, the same essence. And that 
is who you are. And that is what's covered over, pushed back by the small self. And the whole game is protection. But if you get down to it, protection from what? It's protection from feeling. But feeling is what gives us access to who we really are.